So as the Western Cape continues to count the damage following last week's eight-day taxi strike, tenants at the Philippi Village say it took its toll on them. Philippi Village is an integrated, mixed-use development which is home to a diverse community of entrepreneurs and small business owners. Let's speak now to Angela Tefo, head of the programs there. Angela, thank you so much uh, for joining us here on Newsnight. Um, you speak of the toll that it took on this community. We understand it's also one of a kind. It's a smart village. It's a place where the community is supposed to go to be able to express themselves, to engage in business activities, leisure activities, and ultimately, it's supposed to be a safe space. Um, tell us a little bit more about the toll that this uh, taxi strike took on the community. Philippi Village is a, like you said, you know, a space that provides safety for not only community members, but also for local entrepreneurs, small business owners, and a variety of organizations. And when something like a, a, a volatile situation of this nature occurs, it not only prohibits the community from accessing the safe environment that we've created for Lippi Village, but what it means is that even the business owners, the entrepreneurs that need to trade in order to be able to put bread on the table are, are unable to do so. So one of the um, incidents that occurred is that in the middle of the night, we received um, intel from the community that there was a bulldozer. It was now not only a violent situation on motor, motor vehicles, but on buildings themselves. And this bulldozer was going around knocking, knocking down buildings. And our immediate response was that, what do we now do? Because we are in the heart of Philippi um, and our close proximity is community. But I think that another thing is that we need to be able to find ways on how do we build not only business resilience but also community resilience so that when this occurs again what is you know the response right. that um community members need to be able to do and to take i want to get to that rebuilding and that future outlook in a moment uh but I want us to pause for a moment on what happened last week. And I know that you were involved uh, in, in an altercation where you found yourself in, in quite a heated situation. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what happened? Because that was you know, very much uh, at the heart of the taxi strike and the intimidation. So um, on the first day, immediately when the announcement um, occurred that there was to be um, a taxi strike, um, a couple of my colleagues and myself, we have a um, almost like a, a club um, and we drive in and out together. So we were about to go home um, early for our, our safety. And the route that we take out of our Philippi Village site into the neighboring community where we live, um, we encountered community members um, violently um, stoning vehicles. So in the middle of this, we stop our vehicle and as we stop our vehicle another small taxi which we call in the community amapela drives straight into us so now we're in the in the in the middle of a situation where there are stones being thrown around and we are in an accident with the worst um you know um you know worst type of uh of an incident that occurred to us. So we now thinking, okay, what do we do in this moment? Because we can't go anywhere. We need to be able to speak to the other driver. And it was such a, 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 a triggering um, um, a moment for me because I also had my two-year-old daughter who goes to a preschool on the Philippi Village site. And all of these things were occurring. But there's one thing that I think that um, from the work that we do to help to de-escalate the entire situation because taxi owners were coming and taxi drivers were coming, but we solely relied on the fact that we are Philippi Village um, and that helped us to de-escalate the situation using our de-escalation um, skills from community engagement also helped a lot um, just to be able to manage the situation in unfavorable environment. Um, it, was, it was quite a traumatic experience. Mm. So, so when you talk about de-escalating, um, what stood out for me in, in, in your press statement that I read a little bit earlier is is not just the de-escalation of that particular incident where you manage to calm tempers and ultimately uh, you know, walk unscathed, um, although triggered, from a situation that could have turned out very differently because of the reputation that Philippi Village has and that you reminded angry community members that, hang on, these are people and, and uh, this is a community centre that does work for the community. Um, 
and, and I want you to talk to us a little bit about um, the way in which the members of the board and the members, uh, you know, the people who work at Philippi Village handled the, these entire eight days because, as you told us a little bit earlier, you also had a bulldozer bulldozing uh, buildings within the Philippi Village. Um, you had numerous threats made against the property and against people there. How did you manage to diffuse that situation, not just in, in one day, but over a period of eight days where, where in other instances we saw major incidents of violence, five people lost their lives, and yet you guys seem to approach the situation very differently. I think what makes us so different um, in our hub is that at the heart of all that we do um, is the community. And because of that, the community finds ownership of our space. They identify with our space. Um, we've taken time to be able to um, engage with various stakeholders, and these stakeholders know who we are. Um, and I think that this alternative way of doing business has allowed us this very innovative approach to be able to just say Philippi Village and allow taxi drivers to completely calm down and be like, wait a minute, we know these individuals, we know this organization. And I think that um, one thing that resonates with me and the team as well as the board is that how do we um, place the people that are most affected, you know, at the heart of the solution? Because um, yes, you know, Philippi Village as a, a property uh, management company got affected, but then small entrepreneurs, five small entrepreneurs got affected by this. One of them, um, her name is Nomafu, and she has a sewing business. And she, her business is in a six meter container, a refurbished container, but she is able to put bread on the table for 18 other families and her business was affected. And it's like, what are some of the solutions that we can do to try and bring services that will be able to build resilience with these young entrepreneurs that are trying to make a livelihood for themselves? And what are some of the um, partners that we can partner with to bring those services into the community to be to build this resilience for entrepreneurs that when something like this happens, because something as simple as ensuring all of your equipment is something that is needed, that education is needed, something as um, basic as bookkeeping that will be able to make sure that your business in the long term um, is looked out for, because some of the solutions that our board and our CEO, Bushara Zaka, are looking into is the long-term effects that this um, taxi strike has had on our community and on informal traders that trade in our space that trade in our communities and those are the voices that we want to um you know speak on their behalf and louden what they have to say and i think that such conversation allows us to start rethinking and reimagining how we um approach these challenges that sometimes we face We've heard Santaco this evening saying they're filing interdicts against the impoundment of more taxis this weekend and that they're not ruling out another taxi strike in Cape Town. Does that make um, you anxious? And, and how are you going about preparing as Philippi Village should you know, this kind of a situation rear its head again, not necessarily in the long term, but possibly even in the next couple of weeks? Um, when you ask that question, you make me remember today. Um, so I'm the head of programs at Philippi Village, and my team is solely young people. Um, they are uh, entering the um, professional space, and this is their first work. And immediately when the fake news came about that it was going to start immediately, the panic and the anxiety of my team was so heightened. Um, you know, normally in our community, we see smoke, but it was, it, the panic was like, there's smoke over there. It's probably starting right now. And it's, 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 it's about how can organizations that, that operate in our space can take a trauma-informed um, approach, you know, to make sure that the well-being of um, the employees as well as the community are also um, met. And I think that once again, one thing that I come out of, 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 the, of this entire situation is that how do we again, you know, give voice to those people that are mostly affected? And what are some of the ways that we can do that? And I think that, you know, coming together as um, um, 
township economy contributors, as businesses, as organizations, as community? How do we come together to also contribute some of these decisions that are being made by both parties, whether it be provincial government or um, the, the association? And how do we also um, sort of put a voice in, those, um, in some of those decisions that are made? Angela, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. It's so refreshing to see uh, people, communities looking out for each other. Um, you know, often in the, in the mainstream news, we, we see uh, the tension, the conflict, uh, acts of violence, and, and the immediate conflict between, in this instance, the, you know, the taxi associations and, and the local government. That takes, you know, all the headlines. And, and understanding the stories underneath that and the impact on communities is absolutely crucial to understanding how to move forward. Um, so we do thank you for your time and for speaking to us. Uh, that was Angela Teffo, Philippi Village Head of Programs.